Hello, I'm here today with Neil Ritson, CEO of Lenny Gas and Oil. Neil, welcome. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Now, LGO's key assets are currently in Trinidad and Spain. What initially attracted you to those fields? Lenny Gas has been in um, Spain for about seven years. It was a place to get started, really, um, uh, an old field that we could reactivate and prove our capability as an operator. Uh, we've used that then subsequently to move to Trinidad, which is a country with a lot more potential. And we had an opportunity in 2012 to buy the Goudron field, which is a large field with a, a lot of remaining potential. And we've been able to increase the production in that by using the skills that we acquired in Spain. And that's really um, been the progress of the company to date. You're talking about existing oil opportunities at Goudron. You're expecting, your targeted production is 4,000 barrels of oil a day there. How, how are you going to achieve that? Yeah, that's quite a spectacular rise from where we picked up the field. When it, we started, it was doing about 30 barrels a day. It was uh, very much uh, a declined asset. Originally, the uh, field had about 150 wells. And our phase one was to uh, reactivate as many of those old wells as we could. Uh, we've reactivated around about 70. We think maybe somewhere between 90 and 100 wells can be reused. That, that's our phase one. But these are old wells. They've been produced a lot in the past. And uh, on average, they're only producing about five or six barrels a day. For us, phase two is where the immediate excitement is. And we've uh, just started in that phase at the moment, which is to uh, redrill, to drill about 30 new infill wells uh, which we expect to have initial production rates between about 60 barrels a day and 150 barrels a day each. So you start to multiply through and you get um, to the sort of uh, two, 3,000 barrels a day that uh, we think phase two can deliver. To get to 4,000 barrels a day, we're thinking about secondary recovery, we're thinking about um, injecting water into the field, and based on nearby analogues, that should uh, be able to deliver a program that will take us above 4,000 barrels a day. Uh, that will take more time, and it's too early to really speculate on how that would be done. Uh, we need the results of phase two drilling to, to do that. But we're right in the thick of it now, and it's, uh, it, it's going as we had planned it to do. And what about at Oliengo? What progress is being made there? Oliengo has uh, been up to about 300 barrels a day in 2011. Since then, we've not made much further investment, focusing instead on, on Trinidad and bringing that forward. So we've been looking for someone to co-invest with us, and we think we found that party currently. We're uh, in discussions with uh, an Italian uh, service company called Pansuico, who uh, we think we found the, the right kind of arrangement to work with them, where we can access their uh, experience and their capital over the next few years uh, to develop something where uh, the production will rise. Uh, we have to share that revenue with them, obviously, but you know the, uh, uh, the sharing is based on it's a larger pie to be sharing. So we're not focusing very much attention on Oliengo at the moment, but it's still profitable. It's producing at around uh, 100 barrels a day at the moment, but it has more long-term -term potential, but we need a partner for that. And how are you going to fund these field developments? Well, I mean, in Spain, we're going to fund it through working with a partner. In other words, uh, farming down and sharing the equity. In Trinidad, um, we have um, been funding our activities through short-term loans uh, and the use of equity. We see that there is a very substantial reserve in uh, Goudron in particular, about 125 million barrels of oil in place. Very little of that has been produced. Uh, and so that uh, we think we can move towards uh, a debt which is based on the reserves or the revenue from those reserves. So we're looking for a more long-term senior debt facility. We've been in that process for about nine months now. As the field has matured, as, as the banks have started to understand our program and that it will deliver, uh, their appetite for uh, lending is, is increasing and hopefully uh, we will be able to fund the bulk of the program and certainly the water flood uh, through borrowing against the reserves. So you talked about the projects you're working on at the moment. Are there any other projects that you're looking at for longer term growth? Um, yeah, again, we look to, to Trinidad. There is a lot of opportunity for us in Trinidad. And uh, we've looked at an area around our producing Ikakos field in the Cedros Peninsula. 
and we're quite excited to have created a large uh, holding in that area, uh, and it's underexplored. The geology is simpler than most of Trinidad. Uh, it's very similar to East Venezuela, where, of course, uh, massive reserves have been found. So, you know, we're very excited about the future of both production and in the medium term, we can return to an exploration activity. Well, Neil, all the very best with those projects. Thank you very much. And if you'd like any more information, please do visit the Edison website.